So welcome, welcome people. Welcome to our platform. This is the UPND platform, uh, Europe chapter. So I greet you in the name of Jesus, wherever you are. Uh, may God be with you. And we are so excited uh, for the first time to go live on uh, this platform. My name is Azuko and an adult uh, uh member of the upnd and yeah today we are going to have a very interesting time together yeah a number of topics have been lined up so i'll hand out just hand over to, to the moderator to to take over Madam good evening Peter. good evening my chair good evening everyone nice to see you all my name is uh, regina mukondola in belgium and I'm so excited to be moderating this session today, the first ever UPND Europe chapter live broadcast. So welcome, welcome one and welcome all. This, as the chair has mentioned, is going to be a very exciting uh, time for us all. Let, let us chime in and uh, contribute as much as we can and see how best we can move forward with this program. So, so many things are happening in Zambia, exciting news, some people are very excited, some are disgruntled, but you know what, you cannot please everybody. So, we, we will start with the good news. The good news is that UPND is moving forward, moving forward, don't be left behind, join us, join us. Let's work together. So, um, as you know, I've introduced myself. I'll allow the panelists to also introduce themselves so that you know where they are calling, uh, they are joining us from. I'll start with Madam Nancy. Madam Nancy, over to you if you can hear me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Zambia. Good evening, all, oh, wherever you are watching us from. It may not be evening where you are, it is evening here in Germany. Uh, so I'll say good good evening, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Nancy Hamunzala. I'm based in Germany. I am a member of the UPND Europe chapter. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Lukomo Ona. Nice to have you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chair um, Regina. Nice to be here on this platform. Uh, good evening, um, uh, Tim. Uh, good evening, Zambia, and wherever you're watching us from. My name is Ivan Slukomona. I'm Interim Director um, of UPND Europe Chapter. With the abbreviations shown here, uh, BTE simply means business, international trade, and education. And my role basically is uh, something to do with business connectivity between Germany, Europe, and Zambia at large as well. Something to do with education, that is uh, educational development, uh, connectivity between Germany, Europe, and Zambia in the world of research, export programs, and um, equipment sourcing so that we could be able to empower our Zambian uh, state schools, especially those in the rural areas. More to come as we proceed on. Thank you. Thank you, by Evans. Thank you very much. I see we have our uh, uh, president of the Zambia Diaspora Organization based in South Africa, Mr. Ferdinand Simania. Maybe you would want to say something as well? Okay, good evening, everyone. Yes, I'm here to join in just to listen and just to get the uh, glimpse of it all. Then I'll contribute as we go on. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. 
Mr. Chair, Mr. Mulongo, I'll throw the ball to you so that you can lead us into this discussion. What do we have today? The topic is, is Zambia changing. We have uh, topics, uh, uh, the floods, the president talked on water harvesting. We have Zambia now enjoying free education. We have load shedding, the thing of the past. And of course, freedom of speech that so many th that denied us, you know, to have uh, that freedom of speech are enjoying. Mr. Chair, Mr. Mulongo, what do you have to say about the floods in Zambia? Lead us on onto that discussion, please. Thank you so much. Uh, once more, uh, Isaac Mulongo is my name. I am the interim chair of the European, the European chapter and we do their management and coordination. Our chair is freezing. We've, we've lost the chair for a second. For the change of power uh, in, in Zambia, I asked myself a question. I said, what law am I going to pray? I'm in diaspora. I'm not in Zambia. So what law am I going to pray to supplement uh, the, the government of the day. So I was looking for ways and then we, with a number of people, then we decided to start this chapter. That was way back around April uh, 2021 uh, with the support of our colleagues from the United States of America. Okay, that is just a bit of history. There's much, maybe another day we can talk about that. Now we really come to what actually we are here for. Uh, it's not long, the president talked about uh, conservation of water, which is getting uh, to waste. So we are here to find solutions. What can we do in times of drought? That water can be very, very useful for, uh, for us. Look at um, what happened this year, floods almost everywhere. And uh, the water has just been wasted because uh, it, it has been um, drawn away or it has disappeared just like that. So we are here. Here to look for always talked about myself it is town planning you know town planning is very very important you know our, our cities are not ready for they are not planned in the way that they will sustain uh disaster uh, those who are in europe you know very well uh how here people they do their things they make sure that they take into consideration a lot of things before anything can be built or can be erected. But in Zambia, we just build anyhow, anyhow. You saw what happened in South Chirenge, where people actually maybe they were not supposed to be living, but uh, they, they they are living there. And uh, it's, it's even God that we don't lose lives. Otherwise, the focus should be what can we do? How can we conserve these waters? You know, because drought it comes. I will just use a biblical term. Uh, Joseph, when he adm ad advised Pharaoh, he said there will be seven days, uh, seven years of fat and seven years of uh, hunger. So, what can we do if it was not to rain in Zambia? You know, we need to start planning, use our heads. And yeah, I mean, you don't need to sit in a government position for you to contribute to the development of the nation. You can do it. It doesn't matter wherever you are. Let me end there. Maybe others can come in as well, uh, so that we, it, we 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 collaborate and debate together. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I also want to acknowledge. I saw Maria just now. I think she has disappeared. Uh, thank you for those contributions. I I totally agree about uh, town planning. I think we are still we haven't really updated the, the system of uh, drainage in uh, in Lusaka. I noticed uh, uh, at um, East Park when when the fly, when it was raining how how badly affected it was. So I hope I hope uh, uh, the city council is looking into it. Or is it uh, is it city council or DMMU? Who's in charge of the the town planning now? Anybody? Madam Nancy or Mr. Lukomona? 
I'm not really 100% sure of who is in charge of uh, city planning. I'm, uh, I'm sure it falls under the jurisdictions of uh, the, the council, urban and rural development sector. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, anything else you want to add on uh, madam nancy or even mr simania we'll, we'll pick on you <laughs> all right okay um i think for for, for the city planning it's uh, it's under the city council uh, which is under the jurisdiction of the mayor. So mm -hmm. if it's uh, any information which we need to share with her uh, and talk to her, we need to engage her. Uh, so I believe maybe on this platform, I know that's a topic, but we need information from the experts who are on the panel to, to see how we can help uh, the mayor or the city council to solve that problem that is happening now in Zambia. Uh, because as you know, the drainage system is not okay. Um, uh, people are living in, uh, some in shacks, and some are living in in the areas which are not yet planned and everything. So the floods are, are really um, destroying uh, the thing. So, yes, it's is going to the to the to the end of the season for rains, but in the interim, uh, this team should work together to make sure that uh, the, on the next season, things are done properly. So, what can we submit to to the town planners, to the mayor, on how to sort out that actual problem? I think that's the discussion which we should have. Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank thank you for that submission. Yeah, I totally agree. I think we are uh, okay. This is just the beginning. I think as we go on, we should be inviting experts on these subjects so that they can at least educate them the masses on how things are working and who is in charge and what they intend to do in in the future. I am very sure that what happened this year might happen again, and it's nice to hear from the experts. <laughs> Uh, anybody else? But chair, I think uh, Rosaline is trying to join in. If you can, if you can see and allow her in. I cannot see her. I can only I see Linda that. and Mrs. Uh, Chibamba. Uh, uh -huh. they, they have to rejoin. They have to rejoin. They didn't join with the audio, so they have to rejoin. Okay. Okay. Okay, anything else on the on the floods? Maybe Maria is there now. You can Yeah, Maria is in Lusaka. How is it going? Hi Maria. <laughs> Hello. I have poor network. I keep on, you know, the connectivity problem is uh um, yes. making me lose um the, the you know the meeting. Um, okay, no problem. So kindly, kindly tell me what the question was, please. Uh, the question is, how is it now with the floods? Uh, what are you seeing since you're on the ground? How did it affect the Lusaka, especially? Where, where are you are? You're in Kaunda Square, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, and I'm sure you've been uh, moving from one place to the other. How is it? How is it now? It's much better, if I would say. It's much better. And uh, well, I've been up and down. I think the affected areas are not within the radius I have covered so far. I've been here for three weeks. And so um, the problem must be under control again. Okay. Which areas do you think were mostly affected? I know most of the parts I saw where the president visited in Matero, I think. I saw something very bad in Chilenje, um, around East Park there. Where no. Pro is it Protea Hotel? Protea? Um, yeah. No, it, no, these areas are quite dry now. Maybe Matero. Okay. I haven't been that far. I don't know the situation. <laughs> okay. 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 Anybody to join in? Uh, Mr. Lukomona. Yes, on the same uh, topic of uh, the flood uh, issue. You know, um, 
Mr. Feldman <coughs> Simanya really said something good that we've got to bring in experts uh, who can, you know, update us on what they are doing or what's being done to curb this kind of a situation. I remember, you know, uh, governments in, governments out, we've been having such floods, though not to that magnitude as we had for decades. If we all remember, if we were there, I know we were there, we were born by then, there was long before, in the 80s, the Kanyama disaster. I think that was uh, during the UNIP. And it was just like we're discussing here. The then UNIP said, okay, we're going to uh, work on it and this and that. UNIP went, uh, other governments came almost every year of the past decades, we've been having such floods. For me, what I think is that uh, there hasn't just been that kind of, you know, prioritizing what is important and to look into the issues. This time, what we saw couldn't have happened if seriousness was put into that issue by the previous government. Now my question, the question I've got to ask is, what different thing is our government, UPND, is going to do to ensure that they failed then government to cap such kind of a situation, okay? It should come to rest under this administration. What failed previously? What should they do today, the UPND, to ensure that in the forthcoming years, we aren't are going to experience such kind of a thing? That's, uh, I think, the critical question we've got to ask and answer. I'm pretty sure papers have been done, uh, surveyors have done this and that, but I mean, it's never worked. Probably Mr. Uh, the name is gone again. Mr. Simania, Ferdinand. Mr. Simania, probably uh, you may be privy to such kind of information. It failed previously, it failed decades, years back. What different things should be done by our current able government of UPND to ensure that next year, People aren't going to lose property through floods. All right. Okay. I think um, I think what uh, are the first steps we need to do is to start engaging them. Uh, us from outside, we we start to engage them because um, uh, sorry to say that most of the time um, people come into power. Um, some maybe uh, seem sorry to say lose focus on what is happening on the ground. So it's us now, um, the groups that are looking from outside to see what is happening there and say, but okay, as Zambians who are UPND out of, of Zambia, this thing needs to be addressed. So my, my immediate um, thinking is, on this program now, the next time, Let's bring in the mayor. We say, Mayor, we've got a concern as as the UPND um, from Europe, and this is our concern. So, what are you doing to address this in the next season? Do you need any experts from the diaspora outside to come and help you? Um, you, you know, that's why we had that diaspora conference because Zambians in the diaspora <coughs> have got. Um, um modern technology to to sort out all these things so we need to to transfer knowledge from the diaspora to zambia and that's how relevant we are becoming so yeah we need to make sure that um, we engage the mayor we can invite her she will come we we should have a serious discussion with her we should minute the discussions we should put the cause of action they need help and also um uh to be assisted on on what to do. I think that's the reason why we exist from the diaspora. I don't know if I'm putting it correctly. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Um, excuse me. Correct. Yes, yeah. uh, Maria, and then Nancy, please. All right. Thank you very much. Just like Mrs. Simania has, um, you know, mentioned the need for the diaspora to be involved. I'm going to talk about what um, the government uh, has, um, it, it, well, it, how the government is trying uh, to actually handle handle the the, the waste management um, in the city, which is the biggest problem, which is leading to the blockages of some of the drainage that we have. 
Um, I think uh, I'm going to talk of uh, the conference that was held in Zambia, uh, which was the EU and uh, the SADC. Um, it was between the, the EU and, uh, and the SADC, and it was held on um, the 22nd and the 23rd of February, which I attended um, directly from Italy because um, I, as diaspora, is involved in um, uh, bringing uh, a waste management um, um, association from Austria who are going to give a hand in capacity building with the city council. Mr. Simania, our, our president, has mentioned of how important it is for the diaspora to be engaged. I'm here to announce that, of course, like, um, um, of course, uh, some of us have started. So we have the Dems, okay, a group of uh, Zambians in Denmark, and I from Italy, who have started engaging engaging some associations of experts who are going to come into the country with the EU money and with UNIDO capacity building, because what we need is to start sensitizing the people in the country uh, in order to start um, re, um, helping um, in uh, waste management collection. You know, you know that in Zambia we don't have this system. What we have is just uh, all the garbage being put together, and we don't have the system uh, in place where it it can be collected that we know. And where do the people throw the garbage? They actually throw it where they can. And we know that the waste pickers we have in the country at the moment are very few, and uh, obviously they do that at a, at a fee. And all... For the poor people we have, Um, to pay the waste pickers in order for and a throne where 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 possible. And what happens? And this this is the the main um, problem of blocking the dra the drainage. So I go back to the government. Zambia decided to host the Circular Economy Conference, which I would say that I attended it and it was very very uh, insightful because the SADC, um together with the EU. They've come together and uh, they've, they've signed a memorandum of understanding in order to start handling the waste money, management, the, the, the waste, um, okay, the issues of waste management as a region. <coughs> I'm going to say that the EU is also ready to help out in the policies called ex, um, extension produ producer responsibility. This is where. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. I, I can just <laughs> see myself. I, I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we can uh, hear you. Connected. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just seeing my... Okay. And so, uh, I'm aging anyone in the diaspora who would like to, to join um, this um, program that we are fostering. I've told you the two countries who started, and I have, I'm here in Zambia. Um, paving the way for this um, association to come. It's called Environmental Exchange um, Association. It's uh, actually a global uh, winner of uh, the best concepts. And so imagine we have them. And um, um, I was uh, at the mayor's office because uh, what, what we've done is um, we've engaged them and uh, we've engaged the city council and uh, like tomorrow, uh, I'm going back to take the questionnaire from Austria, from this association, which which uh, this questionnaire is going to be sent to all 198 city councils uh, in the country because this project is going to be a national project. And um, and so we are going to, to have all the city councils brought on board. So when uh, the association comes, we are going to hold seminars in, in order to start uh, sensitizing the city council. On yeah, I, I think, Maria, on that, uh, I think... Thank uh, you. you
you you've done well on mentioning the waste management i i am and i totally agree that there is so much um a waste or garbage everywhere you go there is garbage and uh, i i have seen some trucks that that uh, take the garbage and dispose of it i don't know where but i think there is also there is also a link between the waste management and the the drainage system whereby um these this waste, this this garbage blocks the the, the system. But again, uh, we can say uh, flooding is 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 nature, you know, and we can't run away fr from it. I think the point that was raised by uh, by Mr. Simania that um, uh, the the, uh, the planning. I think we need to bring in DMMU. We need to bring in the mayor. Let them explain to us what has happened since. Uh, since you need, like I even mentioned, what has happened? Uh, what has been done in terms of um, town planning? Has there been any revamp to 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 check on the um, um, the drainage system? I've seen that they've they've. Uh, if you pass Nikwesa uh, Kuriakum Ring Road, they have they've made a very big uh, uh, drainage system. So I don't know whether that is being used as a garbage disposal pit or uh, we wait for the water to go in there and I, I, I don't know. I think, uh, uh, Nancy, maybe you can, you can add in, chime in and see what you, can, you wanted to say on this, uh, on this matter, please. Actually, Maria, you picked my mind when you're talking about garbage disposal and uh, how we can come in. I think that the people, the Zambian people, are stakeholders in, in this... Um, in this matter, not only the government, so the people as well are supposed to be engaged and we need civic education on matters of uh, um, garbage disposal. Like you've said, you know, there's, there's a lot of waste. What we can bring from the diaspora back home, we know here very well how we deal with our garbages. We have to separate them, uh, plastic and so on. If this system can be brought on the ground in Zambia where we educate our people, because we know that those that live, uh, those that don't live in compounds, sometimes they just dig a pit and that, that's where they'll be dumping in everything in that pit. Those that cannot afford to pay for garbage collection. And you can imagine that when you are dumping plastic in the ground, how many years it will take for that to decompose. So all those things are not just we are, we are, we are, the water gets, uh, um, you know, th these floods are coming from somewhere. So if we can engage our people on the ground as we are engaging the government to educate them on how to dispose this garbage, the garbage selection, this, uh, uh, um, if they can separate the garbage, you know, even the, the, I think the, the garbage collector companies as well are also stakeholders in this. I have seen on the news where they go and dump, they make a dump site where it is even blocking a road. That is just unacceptable. I think that the garbage collectors, companies should have a system of where they take this garbage and what do they do with it. They should also be brought on, uh, on the table together with the government to find a lasting solution with this garbage. Thank you, uh, moderator. Uh, thank you, Anansi. Thank you, Maria, for your contribution. Uh, as we have said, we are going to engage the mayor. We'll see if we can bring in the, the boss from DMMU and see what they can tell us about this. Thank you for your contribution. Since we are, we are on time with our program, I would like us to move to um, enjoying the freedom, uh, the free education. And I'll pick can I say something, room. madam? Sorry? Can I say something on the road as well? Oh, sorry, Rosaline, welcome. Uh, Marie. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Please go ahead. Uh, you have two minutes, and then after Marosaline uh, chimes in, please, by even speak it up on uh, the free education we are enjoying. Thank you. Over to you, Marosaline. Okay. No, thank you very much, Madam Moderator, for that. Actually, it is um, when I was home, back home in last Christmas time. I, you know, I was driving through, let's say, for instance, Lusaka, and as uh, moderator said, Madam 
Regina said they have dug drainages, yes, but those drainages are not clean. As long as the drainages are left exposed, people are thinking now they have, you know, they have made them a place to dump their rubbish. So my my um my question or my appeal to the government is that maybe every person who is doing the construction of the road as they make those drainages they should also cover them with the same pavement because it will create like a pavement for others you know people walking on the street on the sides they have a place to walk on and at the same time under it there is a drainage so whatever so, date people will throw in it will not go in there to block so that is one of the elements which is causing that as we go sensitizing, I think the sensitization is also very, very important. And the people that are guided actually with place where to dump their rubbish because people are just, you know, selling maize. They just open the maize thing and just throw it there because they, they don't have that conscience to say that whatever I'm throwing here, come rain it is going to cause what havoc to my environment. So it's quite important that people should be provided with these nice places where they can throw in. But at the same time, as much as they have made these drainages, they should cover them up. Because, and some of them, I feel they are like, uh, they have made them so deep to an extent that it's become a danger to the drivers. Mm -hmm. If you pass in that drainage, you are going to be deep. It's another trap. For, for an accident or so. So that's mm -hmm. what I can say is that the plea is that they can cover them so that when the rain comes, it will not cause that havoc. Oh, thank wow. you. Oh. Yeah, th thank you so much, Mother Rosaline. Do you know that those drainages are also used as toilets for those people who, who sell um, utun, patun tembaka? Do you know that's that? True. I've seen them yeah. using those. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's um, it, it's something, it's food for thought. We'll bring it up. We, we engage the mayor and see how best we can move forward. The, the, who, whom did I choose? By Evans. By Evans, please <laughs> take it on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Vachia Regina. Uh, quickly, before I go on to the educational aspect, let me just try to add one thing on uh, the uh, drainage staff and uh, this position of uh, waste. You know, one thing is this, let us sometimes try to go back and copy what worked and implement it. If I remember, and all of you, uh, when Vamaiko Sata, I think that was during Chiba's era, local government, but because of his irony feast, I still remember very well. Whenever At the end of the day, Kufikusa, because Sata even brought uh my dumping uh what uh council, Shanshin, the Ma Shepherd's way to Kumakusa, Mapanga Mwene, Mwabi Komu Council Yasa Sender. And if you don't do that, you are going to pay a fine. People followed. What I figured out in Zambia is that the rule of law. Mostly is not that adhered to, it's not followed. Once I took diaspora, advanced my Western world. It's a big fine. In the end, because of enforcement. So I would implore as well uh, people that are in governing that aspect, the council, local government, to enforce certain laws. Let's reinforce that. Uh, that was a little contribution in our work management. Then getting back to school, education, free education. Oh, that's my fault. Thank you so much. And uh, for me, um, free education in Zambia is a dream come true. 15 years ago, when I came to Germany here, when I discovered after having been exposed to other education systems in the UK, the US, finding a developed country in Germany which offers free education where a father is going to university doing his PhD or master's for free barista drop no primary for free this is what is happening now in Zambia and big ups to uh, the government and uh, 
under the leadership of uh, His Excellency President Akinde Chema. Well done. Now, what's the impact of education? Some people say, no, Valeta, free education, need the Kuyama companies, industry. No. The beginning of development starts from the mindset. One, there's what is called God given wisdom, plus the knowledge that we find through education primary, secondary, and university level. There's some people that the UPND is educating for free. When they've got knowledge, they will transmit it into, even if there is no industry at a later stage, they can become entrepreneurs. They've got the knowledge to set up their companies and stuff. And another person says, oh, now, look, well, and good. Nai minina alesa mbila is gathering knowledge than kusangwa mungusebo doing illicit uh, kind of lives. Even in Germany here where we are, free education in universities especially. When you go to most of the unis, students have to rush for their seats. Why? Because almost all countries all over the world, even the developed nations, the Americans are flocking here, the British, the Chinese, the Zambians, the China. My Chinese want to talk some Sunday free education in the German. People are standing in the lecture theaters. They don't care why they're getting the knowledge which they are going to apply, uh, you know, uh, up there in the communities. So uh, the routes taken by the UPND to reinstitute free education, come on. This is something where you are in, uh, you know, uh, the government or you, you UPND, you're in opposition. Let us, let us applaud the reigning government because whether you are in opposition or whatever the case, you've got a daughter, you've got a son, you've got a nephew, somewhere, someone who's attending free education. This is a great start. And I know with this thing that we're seeing, within the first one year institute yet come on by the end of the fifth year i'm pretty sure we are even gonna see free education in universities and colleges everything is possible everything is possible that's my contribution thank you so much jean welcome nice to see you Varemi. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you a anything, Jean, you go in, chime in. Varemi and you, we have to acknowledge your presence. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone. I'm Jean Hamalala. I'm living in Berlin. I've been here since um, 1999. And yes, I'm the, um, I'm, 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 I'm having a, a post in uh, UPN. I've even forgotten my post anyway. It is only us, so there's nobody listening. <laughs> <laughs> it is only us, nobody is listening. Hey. Valu, Banans, what's my post? I've forgotten my post. Yeah, the mobilizer, Mama. Aha, uh -huh. so I'm the mobilizer of the team. Um, Yes, come and join our team. You know, this is a winning team. It's a team um, that has has the head. You know, every time when you when when you have the head that is functioning, things move. It's already been said we have free education. Load shedding is uh, almost gone. People are, are enjoying freedom of. They are enjoying freedom, freedom of movement, freedom of speech. You know, um, tribalism also has been cut short. I was also one of the people that did, like, that last year visited Zambia because I was uh, always uh, scared to go to Zambia because I start with Hamalala, and everybody who 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 is from the south and especially starting with the name with her it was always a problem but i arrived home i enjoyed myself there was peace yes so i'm i'm welcoming everybody to the group to come and join us if you want to be part and parcel of us please just call me i'm here <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> ah you're most welcome you know you should have a name a son name like mine mukondola no one knows where i come from some of them they think i'm not even zambian so 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Vacha, please show us uh, a you. video on free education so that we see and then we we go ahead and discuss that. Thank you. Ma Madam Regina. She quickly Madam prepares Regina. herself yeah, re ready to take on the day at Leilanda Combined School in Lusaka. Sorry, Baremi, you come in after this. Muletalimu. A great okay. 10 pupil sure. shares why she decided to go back to school at her age. Last year, I went to school in Form 3, I went to the So, I went to school in Nankara, I went to school in Nankara, I school in Nankara, I went to school in Nankara, I went Despite being in school, her aim is not to work after completion. I have knowledge. I have to be able to do it in my life, and I have to be able to because Gertrude is not the only elderly person at this school. Five other women aged between 30 and 38 have also been in roads. Yeah, what made me come back to school is its interest and the free education that our president brought. My experience is that I'm doing fine with these pupils. I'm doing fine. I'm abiding the laws of the schools. My last time was when I was in school, it was in point zero eight. My message to other women is that I'm encouraging them to come back to school, but because in education there's everything. The oh, that's, that's interesting. Wow. <laughs> Wow, wow. Thank you very much. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting. You can go to school even at retirement, you know? <laughs> uh, Baremi, over to you, please. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Regina. Um, uh, I'm on mission, so if my video is not clear, uh, please, I, 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 I beg you to understand. So my name, yes, is Remy. Um, Konka, Baremi, no, I'm Man United. Yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a, a bit embarrassing. Uh, the, the one week, the one week to zero goals were a bit too much for us. When we, yeah, I just uh, wanted to rub it in. <laughs> we have written to FIFA to see whether there's a way to stop a game halfway when you see that the results are terribly bad. <laughs> yes. So, um, certainly, uh, I wanted also to just let you know that I'm joining this incredible call, very good opportunity to share ideas at such a level of, um, of, of diaspora and back home. I'm joining you from home here and I'm right now on the ground and travel today on mission into the copper belt. And you certainly see on the ground how much appreciation people are having for many, many different things that are being done. And just like many other speakers have said, uh, free education really has been a game changer. I'm a development worker and I've been in many parts of the country and you literally see, you know, a depressing yet very uplifting kind of picture finding where all the young people that could not afford school, whether they were paying 10 quarter or 20 quarter, that has been scrapped off and government is providing that absolutely for free and everyone is able to access education. I'm an educationist myself, and, and, and I want to believe that uh, this is the panacea for many years that many people have looked forward to, and it's absolutely a game changer. It's a better problem, if there's anything to say in such a manner, it's a better problem to have everyone in school as opposed to select a few individuals in school while at home because they cannot afford. However, the challenges remain, you know, when there's too much quantity, quality gets compromised. And so it will be very important that at such forums such as this one, of great minds that come to the youth in as well to think, to ask this difficult question. How shall we ensure quality? I mean, this quantity. How do we make sure that quality is still 
so that we don't just have uh, thousands and millions no. of young people pass through school and they cannot read and they cannot do this and that. And I think for me, as an educationist, as a, a development worker, and as a person on the ground, this is a question that preoccupies my mind. And also, there are first dangers to see yes, absolutely um, another game changer. And also important to know that um, while we have the CDF, it has, uh, you know, some kind of operational challenges. A lot of people you talk to on the street, the ordinary man, they have no clue, they have no idea what they do to access this money. While this is well intended in the president's mind, there's clarity in the government's mind, there's clarity. We need also to come on a technical angle. How do we make this accessible? to everybody and when we do so there will be many other ripple effects that actually can transcend into other areas that perhaps we may not have deliberately targeted such as waste management you know disposal ensuring cities are clean and even when you walk into the streets of lusaka you should be able to breathe the fresh air as opposed to what we are seeing now so ripple effects of development will manifest in different other areas and so forth so Speaking on the ground here, we see great appreciation and, of course, with intense opposition from those who recently held power because they really do feel they can get back, they can, you know, you know, wrestle power back and so on. I, I mean, anything in politics is possible. But with the kind of leadership that the current administration has provided, they, they have set the bar extremely very hard for anyone who can come from behind to outdo what they have done. But we need uh, um, more of the critical views from people like you, as opposed to massaging you know, those of us who are on the ground, so that I think we are made to sit up and all the time keeping thinking about the ordinary man on the ground. Who doesn't see CDF as an economic game changer? Who doesn't see free education as a panacea? But they want to see food on the table. They want to see money in the pocket with a spoiled mm -hmm. mindset over the years that has been there. So I, I would want to end here, Chair, but I think those are a few reflections I would share. Thank you. Thank you so much, Remy. I'm glad you joined us uh, uh, from Zambia. Being on the ground helps us a, a great deal to see how best we can we can we can move with uh, with this agenda. Um, Remy, I'll come to you. Uh, Remy, but Evans, I'll come back to you. Um, I just wanted to see if uh, the, the chair is it possible for you to mute your. That's what I just wanted to say. Not contribution. Oh, okay, sure. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if uh, I think let, what we do is when someone is speaking let's just check our mic so that the background uh, noise uh, shouldn't be interrupting with the, um interfering rather with our with our broadcast so uh, Remy thank you so much once again for your contribution I think when we talk about CDF we talk about free education and I think and that leads us to the next uh, topic, freedom of speech. Are people abusing the freedom of speech? Like Jean said, so many of us were afraid of going to Zambia during the last regime. We were threatened left, right, and center. Jean, don't feel like just because yours is, it starts with H-A. Even mine, that st starts with M-U-K. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we what role can we play or how can we educate the masses one freedom of speech if you wore a certain color you were targeted La manchester i think it started wearing their red shirts so how do we move with this background that we have? Every day, PF is reminding us of what they did. And then today, the audacity of the former president to say what he said is beyond me. Anybody to pick it up. I would love David Chola because uh, we are in one group together. And I would want David Chola to say something on that if he can. I don't know whether you're able to speak, David.
maybe maybe he, he, he's having connection problems but anybody each one of us Van Nancy do you want to take it up what do you think of this freedom of speech that people are enjoying and then they want to abuse it because you know it was tit for tat and now that they are enjoying this they want to bring up a fight how do we move forward Thank you very much, uh, um, Madam Chair. Pandini, uh, it is a very sad uh, story or a very sad, it makes sad reading every time you hear on the news, you go on social media, on these platforms where you can never, uh, uh, people can never engage <laughs> in uh, uh, exchange of ideas, you know. You can also uh, agree to, to disagree but it is insults, it is uh, derogatory, disrespectful remarks that are shared all the time. And what is, even, what, what is even more surprising for me is that the people that are perpetuating this were once in power and they know very well how they treated the, you know, those of us in, in those days, I mean, those times. Our names were a taboo even to mention it, let alone to speak you know, it was very, you were just uncomfortable. you just uncomfortable. You don't fit in. It feels, you feel foreign. And for somebody to, to, when you have this freedom to abuse it, when we almost, almost lost that, it is really mind blogging. I think that the, our law, uh, I think the president has set already a precedence where he's, he's, he's embracing every Zambian and what I don't understand is why people cannot appreciate the president. I cannot imagine that what would have happened had the former government uh, retained power. It would have just been, I don't know. But the president has set this precedence, which we are also embracing. We live as brothers and sisters here in the diaspora. It would be interesting to know, you know, why, I, I mean, those that are on the ground, is this what we are seeing on social media the same as what is obtaining on the ground? Maybe somebody who is on the ground would enlighten us. Is this something just where people are trying to, you know, make noise, you know, change the narrative on social media? Is it also obtaining on the ground? Or are people just playing politics? But if they are, we know that one match can actually burn for the entire forest. These people should be able to bear in mind and be careful with what we say. There are so many examples that we can cite. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is, uh, for me, very um, touchy, you know, how people come out and how people abuse this. I think we should learn to appreciate, read, and give uh, credit where it is due. Thank okay. you. Can I come in, Chair? Yes, please. Please go ahead. All right. Okay. Come in. Um, I think, uh, firstly, we need to recognize that we are in politics. Um, our politics is a dirty game. Um, the, the campaign promise which we made was there will be freedom of speech. Now, that same campaign promise which we did is slowly working against us because the PF propaganda machine is so sophisticated that we are lagging in pace with them. Um, we need to get in the game and play along with it. Uh, we cannot start crying foul. This is what oh. we wanted. We wanted the freedom of speech. Now we need to up our game as as UPND. So the first thing which you need to which we need to do and which uh, me and Remy and some colleagues have already started is that we need to come up with a media support team from the diaspora. A media support team that is well funded uh, which has got um, instruments machinery and all the equipment that is needed. And this is a plea to the UPND in the diaspora that we should fund this office 
we should we already have uh, top journalists like Maureen Kando and uh, and the other ladies who are already in, in the background working uh, we've got experts like Bradley Chingobe Remy himself who we are ready to start countering what the PF are doing. They are ch changing the narrative of the success stories that are happening. And that's politics. But our media team is very weak to counter those uh, things. We are so relaxed. I don't know what has happened to us, but we are supposed to work extra hard to counter what the PF are doing. We brought freedom of speech and they're using it. We can't stop them. The only way we can stop them is we need to start countering. We need to form a team that is formidable, which the only thing they do is to also give propaganda, but with facts. We, we need to show the people of Zambia what the UPND has done so far. We need to punt on our successes. We need to make sure that information is trickled down to the grassroots. Because as it is now in Zambia, you go to Livingston and ask, ah, do you know what CDF is? Ah, no, I think it's a drama in the constituency, but nice it in the Okay, but I'm going to take a branch. Ah, I'm done. Maybe you see what I mean? There's no information on the grassroots. The man is sitting, the man is just there, but no one has taken. And I blame the SG's office because. The, Sorry to say, the SG's office is dominant. This is what the SG needs to do with his team, to go to the grassroots, reform the structures, talk to the people, give them information, and help them achieve that goal. But the uh, secretary is dead. So as the diaspora, the first thing which we need to do is to make sure we come up with a propaganda machine as well. We, we come up with a communi uh, communication line which we are going to counter everything what the PF is doing. Unfortunately, people on the grassroots, you go to them, you lie to them, one, two, three, you give them 10 rand. They believe. Even if they see that, you know, there's free education, they will believe there's no free education. But you are seeing it. As long as our propaganda machine is not working, we are going to fail. I think that's my submission. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Simanya. Anybody else would like to add, Maria? Anybody, Ramolongo, you're quiet. Um, can I yeah. come in, please? Madam yes, please, Moderator? Maria, go ahead. Yes, mm. please. I would like to second what um, Mr. Simanya has just said. From last year, we have had um, the, the international community who, who are happy with the new Dawn government We've heard them complain to say what is being done is not really um, um, mediated. No, excuse me, it's not really um, uh, publicized, if that's the right way to use, you know. And um, um, they were also saying, so this is reported. I hope we can get back, Maria. Uh, Reinforce. It's um, uh, me is being done on the ground. And so if we are still weak, then it means that it's a risk that the government can run. And uh, I second again, Mr. Simania, that we, we in the DAF think and give a hand in uh, coming up with this um, very strong um, um, group of uh, people who can help. To to, to 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 let uh, the good work which the government is doing be visible. Obviously, time is running. It was high time. Maybe we started looking into it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I totally agree. Yeah, but, but chair, please. Yes, please. Just uh, a reminder of how things are. I would like to play you a video, short video, for seconds, so you see what was happening. Because uh, Zambians, they are fond of forgetting so easily. You know, these people have been very brutal. And uh, if you you heard what the president today spoke in Kitwe, you realize that uh, uh, they have started again coming back. 
they still want us to go back to the very same bad things that were, you know, uh, it is so disheartening uh, to see people who are enjoying freedom when they have done wrong, you know, uh, somehow, you know, uh, in life, no matter who you are, if you make a mistake, there comes a point that you have to pay for your consequences. Yes, even God died for our sins, but he never died for our consequences. So uh, we need to advise our leaders, uh, inclusive up to the president himself, to say that if this is not contented now, when he's still a baby, it will be a very difficult thing in the future to handle. You know, uh, uh, let's not forget the history that the African continent has. We had very brutal people who even ended up killing their own own people. You know, so we don't want to go there. We are same people. We are one country. We just want to live in harmony and happy and 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 help each other to develop to come out of this abjected poverty that has engulfed our 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 people. We know we can impart this, and uh, I liked the motto for the youth, which was about transforming their minds, which is really very good. We should start from there. It's unfortunate I didn't talk about education. Uh, we are trying our best. Let me just mention that as well. We are trying our best in Zambia to make sure that everyone, inclusive those who are less privileged, uh, they have access to education because it's the foundation, you know, it's a foundation. So you need that. So please let me just play that video just for a minute and you see what you see. <laughs> ah. What? So you see, uh, it's that that is how life was. This is just one example. Many other people, some of us, we have even lost the, uh, brothers and sisters uh, because of what happened uh, uh, during the uh, the reign of PF, so to say, all the way from 2011. So we have to encounter it by uh, educating the people. Let's remind them always that if you lose freedom, you have lost everything. If you lose freedom, then you have lost everything. That is why we have to cherish our freedom and protect it. You know, one thing uh, I have to mention this, it has been on my heart. For example, this guy was beating this person. Because of the evil things he was doing, he ended up dying the same way. Some people were propagating for, we are so So much strong on Buten, like that had passed in Pulo and they are gone. It it, it would have been a, a very big step because those would have come in, they would have abused it to to its mark mark. So let's cherish this free education. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chair Molongo. I, I do appreciate your, your comments. Um, anybody else? Laremi? Um, Over yes, yes Varejena. Uh, I, I think I just really wanted to echo what uh, Mr. Smanya said. Very, very important um, uh, uh, comment from, from what he said. And I would want to emphasize that, uh, you know, sometimes you may want to, to keep a snake as a pet and, and yet you allow it to grow into a python that eventually will swallow you. And, and I know out of our kindness and out of the president's kindness, he felt, um, okay, let's remove this archaic law of the defamation of the president. I think it was there for a purpose. And now, having removed it, he means well. He really wanted to strengthen the structures and the fundamentals of governance and, and leave it to the people's conscience. But we are dealing with people who have no conscience. I mean, uh, forgive me to say that. We are dealing with the politicians who have had no conscience. And so having removed that, it became free for all to abuse the president, to abuse the government and in any form. And at the end of the day, uh, systematically, this will begin to create this. respect in the minds of the ordinary citizens and that's how to counter is to counter 
uh, that through a formation of a strong media. I mean, take it or leave it. I think bad as they were, they had a very systematic and strong media system. They communicated their results. They communicated the, the, the actions of their governments. They covered the evils that they did and so on. And at the end of the day, you still see you know, symbolisms of their strength, even on Women's Day, you can see that they can still organize like that and without anyone stopping them. And no bloodshed reported around the country. I'm here and I'm telling you what we have been monitoring in terms of the media. So at the moment, it's very difficult to say we have a, a very strong propaganda machine that can counter these things. And they happen really nearly every other day. And sometimes it's really painful because we are in government and we still handle such things with kids' gloves as if we are still in the opposition. And, and even when, when Fed is saying we need to push this and sometimes we have to donate our personal money to be able to get people to respond to certain things in order to defend uh, those that are being attacked. And, and I do think that is not very fair. And if this cannot be supported internally here, perhaps this is one project that you, our adorable partners and supporters out there, may consider to, you know, to take as a pilot project. You have done incredible things. You've done computers. You've supported PVT in the past. I mean, I was one of those people receiving regalias that you were buying and we were giving students in the universities and so on. And all the time, such interventions that are well thought out have always worked wonders. And I don't think if, if there is no strong propaganda system and machine, we should just sit back and watch and say, I mean, this will hurt us. We cannot be in office for, for one term, Regina, sorry. We, we, we have to defend this is our ideology and it works for majority Zambians. But I think we have given the ammunition to the enemy too much and they can use it. Anyone, right now, anyone can walk on the street and start insulting and you can't arrest them because there's no law that, that, prohib I mean, that inhibits that. So that is kind of a, a challenge that we have. And if there is a way, I want to rally and stand with uh, what Mr. Smanya has said. This is something that we are ready to run with and we can support on the ground. Over. Thank you so much, Remy and Mr. Simanya, for, uh, for your kind uh, contribution. And Muchishinka, honestly, what are we doing? Why did we vote for change uh, if we are still being treated the same way we were treated uh, from the oppressor. How can we move forward? What uh, Ferdinand and Remy have uh, suggested, it's something that we can run with. It's something that we can do. On this same uh, uh, channel, you know, once or twice, but social media, we could be yeah. seeing what is happening and then just bring it on. If the secretary general or a spokesperson or whoever it is, whatever title, are not saying anything, Kuzambia, yeah. we can do it. Mm. We mm. can do it. Some of us were scared that after elections, Yariyama elections, Abawina, we wouldn't have gone back to Zambia. We wouldn't have gone back because the ambassadors themselves were threatening us left, right, and center. And then honestly, today we can sit and fold our arms and watch this happening to us. We can see them boasting about their achievements because it is International uh, Women's Day. It's not money that they have. It's the money that they store that we have failed to bring them to book to return that money. That's the money they are riding on. That's the money they are going to use to come and hit us back in our faces. Are we going to sit back and watch? Are we going to sit back and watch? We have children. Our children where we are, they are foreigners. Here in, in, in Belgium, my kids are looked at as foreigners. Where you are, your kids are not Germans, neither are they Italians. They can speak the whole vocabulary of Belgium, the French, the, the German, the whatever, but they are still Zambians. What are we building for our kids? Why should the status quo continue? We are all able people who can do something. We have got voices. And you know what? Where two or three people are gathered, even in the Bible, 
People can change. We, we don't even need to have money to support just the voice on this particular uh, channel. It can go a long way. Baka tampo kulanda, na mwongo wa UPND Europe, wa Lelanda, na mwongo wa, na mwongo and that will change. But unfortunately, it's like our leaders are paying a deaf ear to us. How can we move? Let us not be scared as we were before. Let us be strong, but are we going to sit back, watch them kill us again? In our own homes, in a, under our own parents. I know he means well, but all of us, what are we doing? Are we going back to him to tell him, Bakateka, this is what is happening. Things are not looking good on the ground for us. They are shooting us, they are killing us. These people are boasting. How can you see Abena Kalimanshi? All, all those people, honestly, who were welding with Amapangas to kill us. It's not hurting me alone. You know, you us here, we have got food, we have got breakfast, lunch, and the people in Zambia, most of them do not have that now. They are making those sacrifices, but then they are also being insulted. They are being insulted by the people we have removed who are toothless, toothless in parentheses. Guys, let's wake up. This is our time. If we are going to wait for some minister to come and tell us that we will never move. We will never move. We are who we have. Let's let's wake up and smell the coffee. I submit and leave somebody else to, to make a comment, please. Go ahead, by Evans. Thank you so much, uh, uh Chair Regina. Um uh, Remy number 90. Uh, this is really a heated one. You know, um, one thing that I've figured out since I think I've been discussing Naba Mulongo Kumbali, we've played soft gloves here. You know, there's a saying that you become what you constantly hear. You become what you constantly hear. You know, it's so much media and television. This is what we are doing. Yes, the elite are listening. Pa Africa, pa Zambia in this particular, life here in a triangle at the apex. They are privy to that kind of information, microeconomics, macroeconomics, pa middle class. Aba vota sana, ba 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 2.8, ba fumi yabeng sarpaishi. If you never understand, do we have somebody, do we have somebody who is able to transmit the language they understand on the ground there? We don't have, I haven't seen that. What social media concept now? Come on, one or when an angel never was tasha, our point that ever popular one if for the TV, the parade of a newspaper. Ah, it doesn't go like that. Goodness is that Pazambia, Umuntu, once and a muko, the Kuruban to Kulish Kuruban to Nagataka Facebook. Let us find the strong voice. Nina New England, the Paloco level, Bamufwa. Abashashwa macroeconomics, microeconomics. Abashashwa macro statistics. It's tun to trade kanye cho. It's tun to trade kanye cho. Briefcase campaign. Ah ah, yari kiteda. Tiri pa grassroots. Fiat number 2.8, why should let us go back to them to say, vanifnest kanifnef, niko turea, nyuku. There are so many fora. Yo, jita po atenti pa Facebook, pa online and stuff. Tamo fit, pamo episho wa kukaputa, teshi pepo na mchimo pali ya fora. No tato. Tien doing a pagras with Panshi, Paria, Varemi, Vafetnand, Muni on the ground. The ideas that you've brought are quite great. But even when you amplify, I'm so happy to hear that you are Maureen in Kandu, Tuavana Vena. Those are powerful voices. Those are powerful voices as well. Ingrimu grassroots. They can never do one for CDF, but we've got some projects now, Isaac Mungo Kuzambi. Where, but even if you have an funda, Counseling and winning mindset, CWM. 
Uko beba tukabia ni kusi idea kuna matule mene mbele na fiyo sama proposals. Awe, wali tuwe bachi tafia hawa kofi hawa ufi. Why? Chibicha lenga. Hawa ikata CDF. Hama officers. Bantu. Bantu wali mu previous government. So they have sent that, you know, web length of message to say, tafi bomba ufi. Now, here comes a boy, a girl who goes to apply for or a grouping for CDF. They will just carry it. What it be powerful? How do we counteract against that? The fact that Chanda ba Remi ba SG ba fili ba bomba. Ni sto ikana masane. Ama politics bukaka. Ama politics bukaka. Toilet sta follow. Sata muntu muale ya kutena kuli ba kaunda ya kuofe sa cha ba kala magata mwa chiste kini na rasta. It was you know bukaka and he helped you nip. He helped MMT. Whom do we have new PND to count on? Today, I can't point any person to say, ah, we don't have that kind of opposition. We don't have that kind of a, you know, a turn. Let us find one, two, three. and the fear of Africa. Even like Vietnam, uh, we don't counteract. We have to get back to them. Even bring them like now this media line is there. UPND, European chapter, let's be bringing them to book. Oh, not to any one of social media. Let's dis discuss openly. I'm telling you, to what my ideas once upon to talk and bigger, bigger ideas to counteract. No, we we know, we not. One other thing as I close is, you see, we have to let people know to say, we have to diaspora. If you talk about Sanama solution, Sana, why we, we have lived in two worlds a Zambian world, to a Chulapo, to a Munchi Chief of Eltwai Science, a Western world, a Kubanish Kepiano, Kutabanish Vinsala, a Kutabanish Vokola Ninsala, Tabjoku Ninsala. We can take it back home. There's a saying that if you want to continue having what you are having, continue doing what you are doing. Now, as we've seen, if you have foot in Salaban and Skumabasu. So if we can partner up with the government offices and so on and so forth, that's why some of us, we don't sleep. That until we can see Zambia. It's so painful. But we don't have to do it. We don't have to do it. Let's wake up. Let's have a voice for Zambia. And this voice, I always calculate I still remember 1984, Wamba 86, Vachi Vivula, Kuchimuimwe, Rayo Tiaisa. Since that time, 1986 to date, to last year, let me put it this way 2021, there's never been stability. We are talking of 36 years in poverty to 37. Our Navafia, our Mobile, for at the age of 20, 25, Let us, as UPND, Show that for surely there is another better life for our people of Zambia. But let us have a megaphone. Nina Nwarashita blow. We shouldn't let my president in that start. She has a staff crew. I say, come on. You don't know what you have a president. Well, for the world, I'm not sure. Since I came, I've never spoken like this. Never for the whole of the language. You want to be a mass spokesperson. But they are just there. Okay, like you are fed and you are there's something that happens when people get into power, but ministerial, directorate, and stuff. Valabako, why comfort here in Gila? Take Lava, Tabalako, Valabucha, no British for Lamona, but the lack of love. The lack of love. That's why Nedo sent the star advocate. I hope Nedo Mushi Shilamfa. Before you appoint Umuntu, let's speak with China, before you appoint somebody. To reign in a certain position, track his background. What little thing has he or she done, even for the family? family level. How can he save or she save each other chance? No, even the Bible says so. If I can't trust you, Patu, no, no, I will never trust you, Patu. That's the mistake we make. We don't look. Because from your leaders, I'm going to more positions. Moon to one shelf at work as often equal quality for a family that for one. Mom Pellet, no one can teach for it. I'm telling you, let us not expect more. You can't change when you grow up. So that's my submission. It's really.
Thank you, by Evans. Anybody? Well, Rosaline, my color tondo. I and they enjoy every discussion going on. And um, actually, from the previous speakers, they have spoken my mind as well. And standing on the same ground and knowing to say, um, first of all, on free education is such a privilege. And then coming to um, the level that we're talking about in terms of politics and the freedom of speech. Um, I always say just as much as there's freedom of speech, there has to be guidelines and limits on how free you are on how to speak. Because it's the same when I know I'm free with you. It doesn't mean that I'm free with you with everything. There's supposed to be that rapport and respect and value for what we are talking about. So if you are freedom of speech doesn't mean that we can insult each other. Freedom of speech doesn't know doesn't mean that we demean each other. We have to value and respect each other in that kind of freedom of speech. And even when we are speaking, it needs to be speaking with value and importance and not just speaking anyhow. You know, in Kaonde we say Bam Kanoam Kikopo. It doesn't mean that you you just speak anyhow and just make noise. No, you speak with value, and people who are listening, they have to hear to say there is a point here. And that is what it means to do it with freedom of speech. So as much as our government has brought in this value of freedom of speech, let's use it to our advantage as a nation, whether inside the country or outside, so that whatever we bring out, whatever we speak, it shall bring value to the economy. It shall bring value to even uh, us Zambians to say, oh, that one has said something. And everybody will listen. And not just uh, when that one speaks, it's just just noise. It is not what we are talking about. So we appreciate that freedom. And if each one of us will respect it and use it to our advantage, we are going to grow as a nation. And we are also going to bring a lot, you know, to our development of our, you know, our economy. So... I love that. And also, I want to speak on what the previous speaker said concerning um, position in our country. Just as much as we love our politicians and everything they are doing, our president criteria is very, very important, you know, and character is also very important. How is the person? As by Evans has said, it's very, very important. So I don't want to elaborate more on what he has said, but I just want to agree with that point to say it shall help us. Look at the quality and not the quantity because that is what will bring us somewhere. But if we bring up the quantity, then we are just packing everything, you know, and at the end of the day, you carry a heavy bag. And when you come and offload it, you find that there are only two items that are valid. The rest are just something. And we hope we are going to take that very seriously as a nation. Thank you. I submit. Thank you, uh, Rosaline. Uh, if, uh, I'll pass the chair and then by Mulongo. And Marilyn, welcome. Should I come in? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Yes. Uh, th wow. Thank you so much. This has been really wonderful. You know? um, I know. I like what Ferdinand has said, that when heads like ourselves who have lived in a, a diaspora with all this experience can team up together and uh, do things, we can we can do them. It is possible. There is nothing impossible because we have everything at our disposal. Now, me, I, me, I work differently. I want to tell you now, I'm a practical person. I believe in what I say, I act on. So, Bamalia, since you are in Zambia and you have access to the mayor, could you please assist us that we want to have our next week here on this uh, uh, forum uh, as a guest? Yeah. Is it? Is with that okay? Pleasure. Yes, with pleasure. I have an appointment, like I told you. I'm taking a questionnaire, which is an international questionnaire. She's very excited. You know, when we went there to another Edwin, uh, Edwin, um, we actually combined our, our appointment. And um, she knows that the Zambia Diaspora Organization um, wants um, to give a hand to the city council. So her door is open 
And uh, if you allow me, um, obviously I can extend this invitation just as much as she's happy that um, we, we are coming on board. And uh, I saw the openness she had when um, we were there. Thank you. So uh, let's be practical. If you are bringing the uh, the the DDM, DMMU person as well, please let's make sure that we get hold of them and bring them on the table. Least we have the problem. So what we are looking at next now is a solution and how we can go about it. So let's be uh, let and look start looking already. What can we feed in ourselves from our side? And I just want to mention that, remember always that we can have ideas, but without money, nothing can work. So we should also start thinking in those lines that we can have some kind of a financial muscle which will help us to do even just administrative work and even to add value to whatever we are doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair Molongo. Thank you very much for your contribution. By, by Evans, and I think we should be winding up until... At twenty-one thirty, isn't it, Vice Chair? Uh, you're on mute, well, Isaac. You're on mute, so I can't hear you. Yeah, I was just saying we have overshoot the time. It doesn't matter. Yes. We, can be, we can be here twenty-four hours, but let's be sure <laughs> time is money. <laughs> okay, yeah. Since we are all working tomorrow, we will let's end in about four or five minutes, and um, I'll ask each one of us to go uh, with thirty minutes of closing remarks after by events. So take it up. Anybody can pick it up from by events, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me close up with uh, freedom of speech uh, from our sister, uh, Rosaline. Really awesome what you said to our sister, but the problem that I've got is that if we're on our side as UPND, we are following the rule of law, according to uh, rules. Now there is somebody out there in the opposition. There's what we call Sevana Wikute. Let us abuse it. Let us abuse the freedom of speech. What is the government going to do about that? It's very cardinal. You can't just do whatever they feel. But if a chancellor now, but she was all staff, they are going to visit you. Let's do something on that one. Then in closing, education. I'm just uh, here to urge all those that have got relatives anywhere, all corners of Zambia, believe Chipokelele in Chicha free education. Muni education, Mwananga Sambirida. The fact that Mwananga Kalambaba will get a school. Ichalunga Chia Sambirida, let me put it this way. Ichalunga Chia Sambirida, a one on she. Why? The fact that Mwananga Wamu was a night. Now we're watching quite the knowledge so that Naguna, but market, this year, then in the Funda Kwambi. That was Sambirida, Ubunonshinish Waza, which simply means Umutunang Waza changed to the business was a little capital. Now much for if you have capital idea. CDF is real, Katantameni. Free education is real. Katatamin tuale nyapa na baki kuskuruba kumienu mafamu baye sambirila. Na atasha mkwaya. This is Ivan Sulukomona. I'm Andwe, a Business, International Trade and Educational Interim Director, UPND, European Chapter. Thank you. And I, I appreciate uh, the chair, lady here, Varejina, the chair himself, Vamulongo, Vice Chair, Van Nancy, and other directors on this. Let this be a revival for our beautiful country of Zambia. Thank you, Vice Evans. Come on, ladies, please jump on. I don't know if Nancy was pressing the button. Varigina, yes, you are right. mute. Varigina, ah, you are say mute. 30 seconds, Maria, so that uh, Nancy takes it up and, uh, yeah, we go okay. in that order, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, um, uh, I just wanted to age our... Um, um, okay, my, my appeal is that uh, maybe we can have another round, even if it can be um, a, a kind of meeting on education. We covered it very little. There's um, a, a lot, a, a lot we can say, which maybe can come up, can come up with ideas. Um, I mean, ideas which we can launch 
uh, especially when it comes to, to media, um, whereby we can encourage, we can have slogans and ABCD to encourage our people to say that embrace free education, because even in Europe, we have Horizon in the EU, Horizon 2020, um, there's, um, uh, it's like go back to school, even for the adults. So it's not just us in developing countries. And um, then another thing I wanted to say, we talked of uh, the flood, and I'd like to say that uh, I'm happy if I can lead the team of secular economy and waste management. But I guess I have uh, um, a, a lot of insight um, in this. And then the last one was, um, uh, anyway, these two, my seconds are finished. <laughs> thank you. Maria, thank yes, you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. yes, thank you very much. Um, I would like to thank everyone that came on the panel for um, sparing time and uh, making time for this program. I want to urge our viewers, our listeners, that this is not the uh, this is an ongoing um, uh, uh, I mean uh, program that we are going to be having as a chapter here. We are going to be having these debates every uh, every Mondays, every week on a Monday at twenty hours. So please. Uh, join us and uh, I would also like to say that I you know we only scratched the surfaces of all the topics that we had on education, on the floods, on the freedom of, of speech, um, freedom of speech. We have a lot more. This was just a junk of what is yet to come. As we go on, we are going to be tackling these topics in detail. So this one was just a starting and we just scratched everything at the on the surface. And um, in the coming weeks, we are going to be looking at most of these topics in detail. So please tune in, like our pay, our Facebook page. It is UPN, UPND Europe chapter. And you can follow us also on Instagram. We are also on, um, on uh, YouTube. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you very much, Varemi. Ferdinand. Okay. Um. Uh, thank you, SG. Uh, for me, uh, we just have to punt on two things. Uh, first, uh, let's work on the mayor to come to speak with us so that we can uh, advise and uh, see how we can help. Uh, I think Maria and uh, and Mr. Munonga, they are capable of doing that uh, because last week. Uh, uh, they went to see the mayor on some on some in the other engagements which we were doing so i think i think that one can pass um then the, the second one um let's punt on the thought of coming up with a media support team that will be backed by the diaspora we need that uh, team that is going to work hard to counter the propaganda and also I give uh, proper information to the grassroots about what the UPN is doing. Uh, that one, it's very, very important. Um, I had a chat with uh, Honorable Cornelius Mitwa when he came to Johannesburg about a week and a half ago. Uh, he even said that he, he can be the patron of that uh, a whole uh, a machinery. So he's on standby. It's up to us to to, yeah, to either choose him or or we can just run on our own. But I think it's important that we need to come up with uh, all we need for now. I don't know, Remy, maybe you, you can come in. Uh, we need uh, an office space. We need uh, computers. We need cameras that uh, we can be using. And uh, I mean to share information around yeah thank you very much i think that's my submission thank you mr president uh sorry you will hear me calling him mr president because he's the president of the zambia diaspora organization you will hear him calling me sg because i'm the secretary general of the zambia diaspora organization as well because i know linda is also sg for upnd german so um just to, to avoid confusion when you hear sg it means uh, zambia diaspora organization uh, Remy, 
Are you there? Uh, Marilyn, would you want to say something? I'll pass and do it okay. next time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marilyn is best in uh, in Luxembourg. So I, I invited them here just to have a feel of what is uh, what is happening. Yeah, so if, if there's no other comments from um, from anybody, I would like to thank each one of you for coming. Uh, but I would also want to just um, recap what uh, we discussed and uh, the comment from Linda, uh, which is in the group, and I'm sure maybe some of you are not seeing it. I'll go ahead and read it. On roads, let the government bring us a system on anyone who wins uh, wins their tender to do any of the roads to sign an agreement saying the roads they have done have a lifespan of five years or three years so that in case the roads go bad before the agreed time, then the company will redo the roads at their expense. This is coming from uh, from the chat, uh, the private chat of this um uh, the, the forum, the live broadcast. But we all had interesting um, comments that came in. And I would encourage you, please feel free. Let's not be like we are in a Zoom meeting. Chime in when you think you can chime in. The more we express ourselves, the, the better we will disseminate the information uh, out there. Please come one, come all. We need to work together to have this become a reality. We are grateful for the South African chapter, which is uh, Ferdinand Simanya, who's in South Africa. Thank you so much for your contribution. I know you never failed to support anything that uh, it, it concerns uh, development. So thank you very, very much. Please come, come again. Subject sometimes, as the vice chair has said, that we'll be uh, going live uh, every Monday. Sometimes there will be something that we will need our agent uh, intervention and we have to come in. Whether it's Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll come in. And th there will be moments where we just hear propaganda. And I think it's high time that we just come in and chime in. The moment we hear they are doing this, let's also do something. Let's uh, maybe as we go on, we might um, we might limit how often we go we go live, but as it is now, our people are thirsty for information. They are really thirsty. They need to hear from somebody. If that somebody is us, let's take up this and, and do it. Let's not wait for a big, big news. Like now, this appointment of Mr. Is it Sinyangwe or some? It's, 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 it's bringing noise. It's bringing, it has brought noise. What can we do? What what's the, the former president said, let's come back and chat and see and bring in some people who can who can really explain to us who have done all these politics, international relations and blah, 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 blah. Let them come and explain to us. With that in mind, please, I leave you. Please may God um, <laughs> may God bless you all for your knowledge for your time. I know each one of us is busy, but I'm very grateful that you made time to come today. May God bless you all and have a very good night. See you soon. A few of us will remain. So those that need to log off, thank you very much for joining us. And um, longer, I think the vice and by Evans, we might remain. Aba no basanko ba kubwengwa me company ndi mehaji bamba basa ima no tumwe kumale ne ikwa mwe mutagaji kalombo mwandi male mwe kalombo mwaya kalombo mwaya chiro tu yarwa kwa monze ori yote na pepe bambire kwa oye kuwe moya chiro tu yarwa kubwengwa ori yote na pepe bashimire ori yote Chibotu ya